The end of Lake 4 has seen a dramatic struggle for second place between overall leaders Telefonica, Puma and Camper, as the fleet headed towards the finish line in Auckland. With Group Armour streaking ahead, all eyes were on the three-way tussle off the northernmost point of New Zealand. Uh, Cape Rianga, or North Cape, depending on who you talk to, um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, quite frankly, we've spent most of this leg pointing any direction but towards New Zealand. My guess is it's going to be nerve-wracking and not very much sleep this next 24 hours to match the last approximately three weeks. So stay tuned. Uh, as always, we will make it exciting. I guarantee you that. After trailing behind in fourth, Campo were finishing strongly with a dramatic surge that put them right on the tail of their rivals. It uh, means that things are uh, getting closer. The Telefonica just on our uh, starboard side now. And uh, Puma, I think, are out in front of us. So um, we're going to have a good old chase down the coast and hopefully uh, we can get the better of these guys. Barring major misfortune, Telefonica looked likely to finish the leg still holding the overall lead. Behind the race for the podium, Abu Dhabi were doing a good job of staying ahead of last place Team Sanya. They were looking forward to the end of a physically testing leg. Soon we'll be on port and hopefully laying North Cape. So we've got Sanya 24 miles behind us and Camper and a few other boats 30 odd miles just in front. So still quite tight even after such a long leg. It wasn't all plain sailing for the leg leader's group armour either. After some bold racing had seen them take a dominant lead, there was a brush with disaster. Rough sailing and upwind conditions gave the French team a battering, leading to the heart-stopping discovery that they were taking on water. Uh, I was upstairs uh, trimming the mainsail when I uh, saw that the bow was behaving a little bit strange. Uh, like the boat was digging into the water a bit more than it normal. So I went downstairs to have a look in the bow and uh, discovered that we uh, had a lot of uh, water in the bow uh, and more water was coming in. So for a while you couldn't really tell how much water there was and each time we opened the hatch you just get flooded with more water. So it's a bit concerning when you start with and you have adrenaline pumping you don't really know how bad the damage is. So we managed to find a uh, uh, leak and uh, yeah, now we're hopefully solve the problem and, uh, and uh, we'll be able to uh, take us into to Auckland in one place. Those hasty repairs were enough to see Group Armour take victory in Lake 4 after a masterclass in rough conditions sailing. 19 days, 15 hours and 35 minutes after setting off from Sanya, China. Yeah, for sure, there is two things. It's the first, uh, first win for, uh, for the Team Group AMA in the Volvo Ocean Race, and it's a win in Auckland. Auckland and uh, New Zealand is a special uh, country uh, with a lot of fans of, uh, of sailors. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great, great day for, for us, uh, for sure, and uh, we prefer to win here. Group Armour's only New Zealander crew member, Brad Marsh, took the coveted prize of first Kiwi home. So I haven't been allowed to, haven't allowed myself to think that we're actually going to win this leg until this morning, but uh, when we came around North Cape this morning, uh, I haven't been to sleep since. I've been watching the whole coastline as we go down and I've been talking through it with all the boys and it's time to you know, really enjoy Auckland now. Behind them, the race for the remaining two podium places was just heating up. We'll have further news and updates from the end of Lake 4 in Auckland on volvooceanrace.com.